Okay, like I promised before, we're going to do the second part of our contact analysis. What we need to do is, in our first contact analysis part one, we, we uh, designed a gear pair and then we put uh, shafts, gears on the shafts and sized the shafts and bearings and then we um, connected everything back together within the within KISSOFT. So now what we want to do is we want to take and do our contact analysis. So the first thing we do is we, we go up and we turn our modifications on and we turn our contact analysis on. Okay. In contact analysis, we can now do um, we can do our load distribution calculated with our uh, K sub Y, K sub A, and T nominal, and our axis alignment uh, also calculated with those uh, factors. And it's important to know that there. I mean, we're not going to get a huge difference in this if we if we turn this off and just run the calculation. I think we'll get like 2.4 in that range. So this is a calculation. We have the axis alignment previously set. Uh, we're looking actually at the, this might be zero actually. We'll see how well it does at zero. Uh, 2.41 and everything is connected through our shaft alignment. We had done that before. So now what we're going to do is we want to get this as low as possible. I want to make also one caveat here is when we did our calculation uh, for our strength and we specified this ratio, uh, I don't know that center distance is necessarily the most important thing here, but look at our contact ratios, 1.4, 1.08, and our uh, 2.497 overall. And this is a helical set, so we have a 20 degree helix angle. This is important. Um, typically the higher your contact ratio, your total, the quieter your gear set will be. Typically, uh, if, you're, if you have questions about that, you can look at Gears Technology Solutions. There's some articles on it. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I need to make these modifications, right? So I can do it a couple of ways. One, I can size these modifications. Let's go to factors here. We're going to calculate along with a, according to 6336-1 Annex E. And the reason I'm going to do this and I'll do it without manufacturing tolerances to start with. Uh, the reason I'm going to do this is because this gives me both uh, crowning and helix angle modifications. So now when I go into my mod and our axis alignment here is set. So we've connected everything together. When I go into modifications now, I can go ahead and size these. It's going to pull up a dialog box and it's going to size for high load capacity. My tooth trace modification now is centric crowning and helix modification. When I hit calculate, uh, you'll get a note saying here that specified size modifications fully compensate for mesh gap. And we're going to take care of that in a minute. I'll show you how. But we get these numbers here uh, for a crowning value and a helix angle modification. If we hit accept, they automatically populate within this box. Okay. Now I can come back and do my contact analysis. And remember, we had 2.4, uh, 2.4 something, 2.44, I think. And if we run it now, it should go down. Uh, we just need to see how far is it going to go down with those modifications. And there's a reason I'm showing this is because there's another way to do it and get more accurate even. So 2.1817, okay? That's pretty good, you know. We're not considering manufacturing tolerances, but it's, it's not terrible. Um, you know, when we consider the, the contact ratios, it's not maximized that by any mean. Um, so let's do this other thing here. Let's turn this load calculation with this uh, distribution calculated on, because it is going to matter with our uh, face load factor and our uh, dynamic and so forth. So now if we run this, Um, I'm guessing that 2.1817 is going to be something a little bit different. We'll let this crunch for a second. And we'll get 2.2250. And this is probably a little bit better indication of what you're going to have. You don't have to run this. I'm just running it to show you the difference. 
Um, if I turn this off and I run it, obviously we'll be back at 2.18. I think we can do better. Um, and here's how I think we can do better than this. What we need to do is we need to go back into our shaft modules and we need to look at our tooth trace modifications. We'll let this finish up, 2.1817. I'll go ahead and save this. I'm going to go ahead and turn my um, shaft modules on. If I go back to my shaft module, shaft calculation, I'm going to go ahead and open up my, we'll first look at the pinion shaft. Okay. And we're going to, we're going to go to calculation. You want to turn this tooth trace modification on. On tooth trace modification, in order to get a calculation, you want to, you're going to look at calculation A and calculation B. And the reason you're going to do this is because you want to see the, the, the comparison between a modified, I'll just go ahead and turn this off. If I say none, if I run this calculation now, it, the program goes ahead and it calculates the deflection and the medium deformation, etc. If I If I go to graphics and look at my tooth trace and look at my load distribution, Here's, here's what's important, or here at least is uh, something that is important. This is a line load across a tooth. Okay, you can see it's higher at one side than the other side of the face, right? So I just, I just run this calculation. I got that a little bit big. There. And I'm just going to put this over here somewhere here. Get in there. All right, there we go. Now you can see it. And calculation one and, and two, A and B are the same, right? Now what I do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to size this. Right here, I'm just going to click this button, this arrow, and it's going to size crowning and uh, tooth helix angle modification. Now when I run it, I'm going to see the comparison between a non-modified tooth trace and a modified tooth trace. So I run this, and we, we see the calculation. It goes, uh, and holy cow, look at this. We have a flat line load across this, this shaft. And remember, when we, when we did our, um, our shaft, if we want to look at our displacement or bending, we have bending on here, which is going to affect the tooth. See how this kind of goes up and how it bends? And this follows right here. You can see that. I would expect there to need to be some tooth trace modification here. If this if this gear was over here, there'd be very little, maybe none, because it'd be fairly straight. That's one thing. You know, it's an indicator of of uh, if you see a big deflection across a tooth face, or a small deflection across a tooth face. Remember these numbers: minus eight point zero three and point six one nine. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to open up my, my gear now. So I have the pinion, so I want my gear. I'm going to do the same thing. I want to look at my tooth trace modification. Make sure it's on. I go ahead and I run the calculation. I've already uh, run it once, and I, I, I size this, right? And I can see i got the same thing going on here. I've got kind of a goofy um, high load on one side versus the other, and I've got this modified tooth trace. It looks like I need to put some tooth helix angle modifications and, and, a, and a slight crowning on there. You can see that. I go ahead and save. Now I'm going to go back to my contact analysis from part one uh, that we did, and I'm going to go to my modifications. Guess what? I can modify these things. So on gear one, which is my pinion, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this 0 0.3. 0 0.30, 0 0.31 we'll call it. My helix angle modification, actually it was 0 0.6, 0 0.619. My helix angle modification, uh, it's going to be parallel, was minus 8.03. For my, for my gear, the crowning number was 0 0.3, 0 0.31 roughly, 
and my helix angle adjustment was 4.18. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my contact analysis because I put those two in. I remember I wrote those numbers down. And I go ahead and calculate. And let's see where we come up. And remember, we're taking into account axis alignment and, um, on, on both the uh, both the gears. Yeah, I need. Mean, they say they want to add case of A and case of V if you want your nominal torque for uh, scuffing and micro pitting. One two point one eight, and we were two point one eight before. Can we do better than this? Uh, possibly. Um, we've adjusted these angles. Now let's go ahead and look at um, our tip and tooth relief. We'll just do a long profile modification and calculate it. We can accept. Go back to our calculation analysis, our uh, contact, and run it. Uh, I think it might come down to 2.17 roughly. It's thinking. And see how quick your contact analysis gets done. If you're going to run this through an FEA, ANSYS, or some other method of uh, FEA, this would take a long time. And then we're pretty accurate on this as well. 0.19. Well, that just tells me I need to get rid of a couple of these. Uh, maybe I don't need to, tooth and uh, root relief. And stick with what I had. The other thing I can do is I can turn this load distribution on and run the calculation and see where we end up. Now, this is probably going to be a better indication of what your uh, real con your transmission error is going to be, but um, you can look at it. And what we're doing here is we're we're including the the um, dynamic and face load factors, etc. 2.2289. Now, if we go back to our modifications, we probably want to add tip, and, and we'll do a long profile. We'll calculate it. We'll accept it. Go back to contact analysis and run. I'm thinking that's going to come down. Takes just a few seconds, uh, less than a minute normally, to calculate this, which is very fast. We have our contact analysis now. And where are we going to end up? We end up at 2.1775. So, uh, one thing, if you're going to lose, use low distribution, there's a couple points I should point out here. In your rating, you go to details, and you want high load capacity. You can also change that to smooth meshing. Uh, you can do an optimal tip relief for micropinning scuffing. You would click these two, toggle these boxes on. Um, reg, reg, the relative structural factor, um, you can go ahead and put that number in here. It doesn't make much change in terms of uh, contact analysis, but you can enter this number based on how your materials are. In the system data, uh, I didn't change anything in here, so we're good. What I did do is I went up into module specific settings on my face load factor contact analysis. I made sure this take into account plastic deformation was off, and I uh, adjusted my load factors to calculate with K sub Y, K sub A at times T nom, and also the axis alignment. Normally, it would be up here at T nom, but I think I think it's important to know uh, with your load factors what you have. Okay. So 2.1775. That's pretty good transmission error, um, considering if you look at this. When we run our and look at our basic data, um, we have a pretty low contact ratio. Look at our transverse and our overlap. You get these numbers up, and it will come.